In this video, we will cover editing panel schedule templates and applying panel schedule templates. In this project, there are three panel schedules. Panel schedules are based on templates, and the panel schedule template controls the formatting and the information that appears in the panel schedule. To manage panel schedule templates, switch to the Manage ribbon. And then, in the Settings panel, expand Panel Schedule Templates and click Manage Templates. In this dialog, there are two tabs, Manage Templates and Apply Templates. We'll begin on the Manage Templates tab. To begin, you can select a template type, which can be Branch Panel, Data Panel, or Switchboard. With Branch Panel selected, you can then choose one of the panel configurations. You can create panel schedule templates for each template type and for the branch panels you can create templates for each panel configuration. I'll select two columns circuits across. With the template selected you can click Edit and Revit goes into Modify Panel Schedule Template mode. There are several controls on the contextual ribbon to help you edit and customize your panel schedule template. To begin, click Set Template Options. In this dialog, there are three sets of options, General Settings, Circuit Table, and Loads Summary. In the General Settings, you can control the total width of the panel schedule. You can also control the number of slots shown. This can be set to variable based on max number of single pole breakers, or it can be fixed to a constant value, and then you can set the value. Under Parts, you can choose whether or not to show a header, the load summary area, or a footer. Then under Borders, you can choose whether or not to show the outside border of the template and the border between parts, and then you can control the line style that is used for these borders. Next, switch to the circuit table options. Here, you can control the column header text orientation, and then you can choose how to display loads. There are several options here, and when you select an option, a preview will appear in the image on the right. This can help you understand what each setting does. Under that, you can choose whether or not to show the circuit number on one row for multi-phase circuits. And then, for panels other than three-phase, you can choose to hide the column for unused phases, or to show but disable column for unused phases. I'll leave it set to hide it, and then for show phase column values, you can choose either load or current. I'll leave it set to load. Lastly, in the load summary options, you can control the column header text orientation, and then you can choose to show in panel schedule either only loads that are connected to a panel or a constant set of load classifications. When you set a constant set of load classes, you can then choose the load classes and add them to the list of scheduled loads. I'll leave it set to only loads that are connected to a panel, and then I'll click OK. Next, you can control the information in the header, in the circuit table, and also in the load summary area. To begin, realize that you can either add text or parameters. When you see a value that is inside of angled brackets, that is a parameter. For example, panel name, location, mounting, enclosure, all of these are parameters. They're inside angle brackets. The values that are not, they're simply text. So you can enter in whatever information you want to customize that. 
So in this cell, we have text, and then in the cell next to it, we have a parameter. The parameter can be controlled in the contextual ribbon. You can choose the, the category, and in the header area, you can choose to add information from the electrical equipment category or from project information. Once you select a category, you can then expand the drop down underneath and select a parameter to add. Once you get to the circuit table area, you can do the same thing. You can add text or you can add parameters, but you can only add parameters from the electrical circuits category. There are also several other options available. You can add columns. For example, I will select in the polls column, and then in the columns and rows panel, you can see that there's an insert column button. And you can choose to add a column left of selected or right of selected. I'll click right of selected, and a new column is added. You can also adjust the column widths. Notice that when I adjust one of the column widths on the left, the associated column on the right also updates. Next, I will click in the, in the column header field and you can add text and then if I click in a data field, I can then add a parameter. So with electrical circuits selected, I'll expand add parameter and then I can choose one of the parameters to add. For example, if I select connection type, that parameter is added into all of the data fields in that column on both the left and the right, and also the column header is filled in. I'll expand this a bit to make that connection type fit in there. You can also click Edit Font. So when you're in a cell, you can click Edit Font, and then you can control the, the font, the font size, and then choose whether or not to to make it bold or italicized or underlined. So I'll make this one bold and click OK. And I will do the same thing for the cell on the right. Make it bold and I'll click OK. And then once again, there are several other options here. And I will, I'll select all these. I'll press, uh, notice that if I press Control, I can only, uh, it's Control will not allow me to select multiple data cells uh, but I can click and drag and select multiple ones and then I can click edit borders and I can control the borders uh, that are going to be available. So I'll, I can select inside and click OK and then we'll do the same thing here. I'll click edit borders inside and outside this time so you can see how you can see how it's affecting it here. So I need to select both inside and outside. And I will adjust the bottom portion as well. We will edit the border there and just add outside to fix the all the formatting here. And we, we may not be perfect, but as you can see, there are several options there to control your the font and shading and borders and so on and so forth. Lastly, in the load summary area, you can also add text and parameters. You can only add parameters from the electrical equipment category though. Okay, so as you can see, there are several options here. Once you're finished, click Finish Template. And then, now that we have updated the template, we need to update the panel schedules that are based on that template. And so we can expand panel schedule templates again and click Manage Templates. This time on the Apply Templates tab, we can see that the three panel schedules are out of date. Uh, or not that they're out of date, but that the panel schedule that they're based on is out of date. And so we can use Control or Shift to select those and then click Update Schedules and it will use the branch panel template that we just updated. If you've entered text into a panel schedule that uh, 
that's not in the template, then it could be lost. And that's what the message says appearing here. So if that's what you want to do, click yes. So once again, you can have multiple panel schedules for the different template types and different panel configurations. And then if you had multiple templates, you could select it from the apply templates drop down and then apply that template to your panel schedules. So I'll click OK and then we'll open up a panel schedule and we can see the panel schedule with the connection type that we just added. Now there's a couple things, there's a couple borders here that we're missing, but as you've seen we can go back, fix that, apply it again, and fix that uh, little, this little line that's missing there.